After getting frustrated by his unfortunate circumstances, Shuya decides to end his life. But before that, he wants to fix his past mistakes. Shuya Ishina was never a good student. One day, a new student named Shuko Nishimiya joins his class. She's deaf and communicates by writing down in her notebook. Shuko tries her best to get along with other girls. She even sings with the music chore, but her mispronunciation makes her an outcast. The teachers occasionally let her speak in class, but they don't want to hear her voice either. They also don't take any action when Shaoya makes fun of Shaoko's pronunciation. Shaoko keeps following the other girls, but her classmates are quite ignorant. Shaoya advises her to give up, but she just smiles and offers Shaoya to be her friend. In response, Shuya throws sand at her and calls her gross. The next day, the school invites an instructor to teach the students sign language. However, the students don't want to bother learning just for Shuya. Only a girl named Sahara agrees. Shuya finally has a friend, but after a few days, Sahara transfers to another city. Shuya makes fun of Shuya's loneliness and writes on the board telling her to teach them her weird language. Shuya doesn't mind at all, and it irritates Shuya even more. Shuya's bullying gets more intense day by day. He screams in Shuko's ears, throws away her hearing aids, and teases her in the corridor. One day, he crosses all limits and pulls out the hearing aid so hard that Shuko's ears start to bleed. Despite such harsh treatment, Shuko still requests Shuya to be her friend. He gets angry at her patience and throws her notebook in the fountain. Shuko doesn't say a word and goes to pick up her notebook. The next day, the principal comes to announce that Shuko will not be coming to school. Her hearing aids were quite expensive, but she kept losing so her mother believes Shuko was bullied at school. The teacher asks Shaoya to stand up and accept his mistakes. His friends Meki, Yuno, and Shimada are called out too, but they put all the blame on Shaoya. Everyone starts calling him a bully and throws him into the same fountain in which he pushed Shuko. He finds her notebook there, which contains all the mean things people ever wrote to Shuko. Drenched in water, Shaoya returns home. Her mother has already received a call from the principal and decided to apologize to Shuko's parents. She's a hairdresser and hardly makes both ends meet. She takes out all of her savings from the bank account to pay for the hearing aids. After the reconciliation, Shuko rejoins school. She's not facing bullying anymore, but Shu is. Everyone keeps throwing water at him and destroys his belongings. A person can't run away from his sins and they always come back to bite him. One day Shuya notices Shuko doing something with his desk. He gets angry and calls her a creep, but Shuko doesn't say a word. Shuya hates her putting up an innocent face and starts hitting her. Finally, her patience runs out and she pushes Shuya to the floor. Later, Shuya realizes that Shuko was cleaning the mean words other students wrote on his desk. They call him a bully and even believe that he has no right to live. After a few days, Shuko transfers school, and after that, Shaoya never gets to see her again. Years pass by quickly, and Shaoya reaches high school. He finally gathers enough courage to face Shuko and reaches the sign language class. Shuko runs away on seeing him and hides. Shaoya finds her and returns the notebook. He has even learned sign language to communicate with Shuko. Shaoya does the same gesture as Shuko used to do and asks her to be his friend. He returns home and gives all of his hard-earned savings to his mom. He wants to pay back what she spent on Shuko's damaged hearing aids. She had even sold her favorite earrings. Her mother has found the calendar on which Shuya was counting the days before his suicide. He can't carry the burden of being guilty anymore and decided to jump off the bridge. However, his intention changes after earning Shuko's forgiveness and promises his mother not to do it again. Now he's usually thinking of Shuko and how he can fulfill the promise of friendship he made with her. Since his friends dumped him, Shuya doesn't know what friendship means. At the beginning of high school, Shimada already told everyone to stay away from Shuya. Since then, no one ever bothers to talk to poor Shuya, and he doesn't take a step by himself either. Every day, he just sits in a corner and stops seeing others' faces and hearing what they say. Shuya notices a chubby guy who is lonely like him, but he couldn't get the courage to talk to him. The next day, when Shuya is parking his bicycle, he notices that the chubby guy is being bullied by someone. He's forced to give up his bicycle. Shuya steps forward and gives his own bicycle instead. He never got it back though, and he lost it on the day he needed to meet Shuko. Suddenly a bread coupon falls near him. That's what's called a nature sign. Shuya rushes to buy the bread for feeding the fish and reaches Shuko's school. A young boy opens the door and says Shuko isn't there even though she was just sitting behind. Shuya walks back to his house while nibbling on the bread. Surprisingly, the chubby guy is standing at his door holding his bicycle. He had searched the whole town for the bicycle and found it in the dump. It's been a long time since someone acted so kind towards Shuya. He feels really grateful and asks for that guy's name. It's Tomohiro from the same grade as Shuya. He starts following him the next day. They start going to school together. Tomohiro also invites Shaoya to hang out after school. They go to watch a movie and have a good lunch. Shaoya is also enjoying Tomohiro's company, but he's still unsure of what friendship is. Tomohiro can read the anxiety on Shaoya's face and asks him to speak out. Shaoya has a query that isn't letting him open up. What's friendship? Are there any requirements or rules to follow to become real friends? Tomohiro smiles and pulls out his hand to do a fun handshake, and that's it. 
They are friends now. He believes that friendship is something that defies all logic or words, and there are no requirements. Shuya feels motivated and goes to meet Shuko once again. This time, the little boy introduces himself as Yuzuru. He claims to be Shuko's boyfriend. Yuzuru says that if Shuya is only coming to make himself feel better, then he shouldn't. He believes Shaoya just feels guilty about his past behavior and doesn't want to be Shaoko's friend for real. Before Shaoya can reply, Tomohiro jumps out of nowhere and starts fighting with Yuzuru. He followed Shaoya all the way to help him meet his friend. All the students get out of the classroom, and Shaoko notices the fight too, and runs after Shaoya. They finally meet on the bridge and communicate through sign language, while Tomohiro and Yuzuru are peeping from afar. Shaoya explains that he was confused for the past few weeks thinking about what friendship is. He was looking for a reason to meet Shuko, but couldn't come up with a reasonable excuse. Shuko smiles and confesses that she was anxious about the same thing. Shuda feels relieved to hear this. Then he remembers about the bread and they go to feed the fish together. Suddenly, Shuko pulls out her communication notebook and wants to read it. Shaoya stops her as he doesn't want her to recall those bad times. The notebook accidentally dropped in the river. Shaoya jumps down in the river and Shaoya follows her too. After swimming around for a while, they find the notebook. Shaoya apologizes for dropping the notebook. In response, Shaoko smiles and does a hand gesture of, see you soon. Yuzuru sees this all and believes that Shaoko is an idiot to believe Shaoya. The next day, Shaoya is called into the principal's office. He's been suspended for a week because he jumped off the bridge, which was illegal. Someone posted his picture from a fake account. Shaoya doesn't argue and gets locked up in his house. However, his mother requests him to take his niece Maria outside. While he's at the playground, he finds Yuzuru. He seems unwell and isn't even wearing shoes. Yuzuru confesses that he's the one who posted Shaoya's picture online. But Shaoya doesn't seem angry at all. Shaoya also brings him to his house and offers him clean clothes and a healthy dinner. He also lets Yuzuru sleep at his place. In the middle of the night, Yuzuru sneaks outside in the heavy rain barefoot. Shuya comes after him holding an umbrella. He also brings shoes for Yuzuru. The little boy calls him disgusting and believes that Shuya is doing good to others just to cover up his past mistakes. Despite Yuzuru's rude behavior, Shuya drops him at his house. Before leaving, Yuzuru reveals that he's not a boy, but Shuko's younger sister. Shuko's mother also spots Shaoya outside the house and rushes there to slap him. She warns both of the girls to stay away from Shaoya, but Yuzuru says they can take this decision by themselves. The next day, the girls meet Shaoya again. He asks her if she wants to contact anyone from high school. Shuko takes Sekura's name immediately. Though it's difficult, Shaoya is determined to fulfill her wish. He decides to ask Meki. She doesn't have Sekura's number, but knows the school she studies in. It's out of town, and Shaoya doesn't have enough money to travel, but Tomohiro lends him all of his pocket money. Shuko joins him on this journey too, and thanks him for going to such lengths for her. Sekura gets really delighted to see Shuko after such a long time, while Shaoya goes for a walk and meets an old friend. He wants to reconcile with Yuno and visits her cat club but can't gather the courage to talk to her. The next day, Yuno approaches him by herself. She apologizes and wants to be his friend like before. However, she's not guilty of her behavior with Shuko. On seeing her, she snatches her hearing aids to throw them away like before. Shaoya gets angry and gives them back to Shuko. Yuno gets surprised at his behavior and goes away saying that he will not be able to keep this friendship act for long. But Shaoya has changed for real and made Shuko fall in love with him. She changes her hairstyle and dresses up nicely to confess her love. She tries to say, I love you. Unfortunately, Shaoya mishears it as a love moon. Shuko gets really embarrassed and runs away. After a few days, Shaoya invites her to a friend gathering, which Meki and Sahara join too. Meki also brings another classmate named Mashiba and Yuno as well. Shaoya enjoys hanging out with friends after such a long time but still wonders if he deserves it. Yuno pulls him out of his thoughts and brings him to meet Shimada. She believes that Shaoko ruined their friendship and they should get back again, leaving the deaf girl alone. Saying this, Yuno rushes to ride the Ferris wheel with Shaoko. Later that day, Yuzuru shows Shaoya the video that was secretly recorded in the Ferris wheel. Yuno said to Shuko that she hates her and she has destroyed Shuya's life. She also asks if Shuka hates her back, but Shuko replies that she only hates herself. Yuzuru wants her sister to love her herself or otherwise, she won't be able to survive the next day. Mashiba asks Shuya about Shuko's past and Meki overhears them. She blames Shuya for spreading past rumors and as revenge, she tells everyone that Shuya was the one who bullied Shuko. Shuya starts to feel unwell and runs away. Later, when he goes to meet Shuko, Meki brings others there too. Everyone starts to argue and blames each other for bullying Shuko. Shuya sits in a corner and gets fed up with everything. In anger, he calls Sahara a coward, Meki and Yuno selfish, and Tomohiro as someone 
anyone who doesn't know the whole story yet, Miss Hiba is just an outsider. They all get angry on hearing this and leave. Shaoya requests Shaoko to spend the summer vacation with him and then he goes back home too. After his part-time job, Shaoya goes to meet Shaoko, but she doesn't come. Her beloved grandmother has passed away, leaving Shaoko more heartbroken. Shaoya takes her to hang out at different places, but there's a distance between them. They can't enjoy themselves fully as they miss their other friends. Everyone believes that Shaoya is selfish, but they forgot that even the monsters have hearts. However, Shaoya has accepted that he can never fix his life. He pretends to be normal and keeps hanging out with Shuko and Yuzuru. The girls take it as a chance to clear things between their mother and Shuya. Their mother isn't delighted to see him on his birthday, but she accepts after seeing her daughter smile. Later that night, they go to see the fireworks. Before the show ends, Shuko excuses herself to study. After her departure, Yuzuru requests Shuya to bring her camera. He enters the house and sees the most terrifying scene on the balcony. He rushes to stop Shuko from jumping off the railing, but it's too late. Shuya holds onto her hand and keeps begging God for another chance. If Shuko dies today, he will not be able to forgive himself ever. Fortunately, Shuko cooperates and pulls up, but Shuya loses his balance and falls in the river. He's in a coma and it's unsure if he'll survive or not. Shuko's mother lay down on Shaoya's mother's feet and begs for her forgiveness. Shuko does the same too. She also meets all of Shaoya's friends and tells them she wants to fix everything. Finally, his friends have realized their mistakes and they all want to see Shaoya alive. Shuko also keeps visiting Yuno till she finally talks to her. Later that night, Shuko dreams about Shaoya leaving her. She wakes up panting and rushes to the bridge where they used to meet. She sits down and cries out in pain. Her feelings are so real that even Shuya can feel them and wakes up. He keeps calling Shuko's name and rushes to the bridge. He always took her forgiveness for granted and never actually apologized to her. He also hurt his friends by giving insensitive comments. Shuya wants to start a new life and fix his mistakes, and he wants Shuko to help him. She smiles and promises to stay by his side. After a few days, Shaoya returns home and Shauko invites him to the school festival. He's still too cowardly to face others and hides in the toilet. Tomohiro pulls him out and his other friends are there too. Even Yuno is there and she's learning sign language to talk to Shauko. Shaoya apologizes to everyone and requests them to visit the festival together. After five years, Shuya finally starts seeing others' faces and listening to them. No one had left him alone. He was the one who separated himself from the outside world. But it's still not late for him to start living again. The door to your heart can only be opened from the inside. Not everyone is your friend, but not everyone is your enemy either. You will not be able to find good friends until you let others enter your life.